Statements within this video attributed to DCI have been approved by DCI's Member Representative Committee. Hi, I'm DCI Technical Committee Chair Sterling Silva from Paramount Pictures, and welcome to DCI's first video. Digital Sim Initiatives is a consortium of the five major studios formed in 2002 to establish common system specifications for digital cinema. Advances in next generation projection and display technology now allow for high dynamic range presentation. But what is a theatrical HDR presentation? In response to that question and others, DCI has been working to determine appropriate voluntary criteria for next generation systems. As part of the specification development process, DCI performed double blind image tests to determine the perceptibility of technical parameters. Black level testing was performed in December 2017 and peak brightness testing performed in early 2020. All content was displayed within the DCI P3 color volume. To further elaborate, let's hear from members of the DCI Technical Committee, Annie Chang, Michael Zink, and first off, Brian Vessa. Please note that each of the panelists today will be expressing only their own individual views on the image testing exercise. They are not speaking for either DCI or the respective studio at which each of them is employed. Thank you, Sterling. Hello, I'm Brian Vessa from Sony Pictures Entertainment and chair of the DCI Technical Committee during the recent image testing. Our industry has been interested in the next generation of cinema image presentation for some time now. A number of manufacturers have met with DCI over the last several years and asked them to define what those image parameters should be. DCI decided to conduct double blind tests to arrive at image parameters that would provide a noticeably enhanced experience for the cinema audience. The first series of testing sessions were hosted at the Walt Disney Studios in December 2017. 24 double blind image testing sessions were conducted, leveraging a state of the art RGB laser projection system capable of displaying extended dynamic range content. The study included both expert and non expert viewers from member studios, along with participants from industry organizations such as AMPUS, ASC, and NATO. In total, 128 individuals participated. This study concentrated on image black levels using carefully prepared content. Mike Zink will be presenting the details and results in a few minutes. The second series of testing sessions were hosted at Sony Pictures Entertainment in January and February of 2020, utilizing a Sony CLED direct view display. This study concentrated on peak brightness levels with carefully prepared content that was color timed by the original colors for each light level tested. Later in this session, we will hear the details of the clip selection, preparation, and testing methodology. For this series of tests, DCI decided to conduct the testing sessions by industry groups so that each would participate with their peers. Individual sessions were held with AMPUS, ASC, NATO, and projection equipment manufacturers. Two sessions were attended by lay people who were not in the industry in order to get impressions from the general cinema audience. In total, 157 individuals participated in this study. After each industry group test session, I conducted a Q&A session to spark conversation around their impressions of what they saw, the testing methodology, and their general take on next generation imagery. These were very fruitful conversations that allowed DCI to interact with the industry in a very informative way. People were generally very supportive of the fact that DCI was conducting these tests and were very willing to speak their minds about the testing and the subject in general. There were definitely opinions. I think these testing sessions were a big win for everyone involved and allowed DCI to obtain real statistical data toward the goal of defining next generation cinema image presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Mike Zink will now present the details and results of these tests and DCI's conclusions. Take it away, Mr. Zink. Hello, I'm Mike Zink with Warner Media. I'm also a participant at the DCI Technical Committee, and I'm really excited to share the testing results of the HDR testing that we have performed over the last few years. Before we get started, I wanna talk a little bit about the testing methodology, simply because it's important to know how we went about it, and it will help understand some of the results that we're going to show in a little bit. It's worth noting that all the testing sessions were designed as double blind tests, which essentially means that neither the participants nor the people running the test knew which version of the clip was shown at any given time. 
Um, we had a number of different tip clips. Each of them was about 10 seconds in duration. And each of the test sequences consisted of two versions of the same clip. All of them presented twice, which means you see version one, version A, then you see version B, then you see version A again, version B again, and then the participant is asked to score on a seven point scale, meaning they're asked to compare version A and version B and say, was this about the same? Was one of them slightly better, better or much better? And if the participant chooses that it is the same, that gets a scoring of zero. If the participant chooses it's slightly better, gets a scoring of one. For better, it's a scoring of two. And for much better, scoring of three. And the first testing that we did was focused around black level testing. In that context, we had six different test clips that we had selected. And for each of those clips, we had multiple different versions that we prepared ahead of time with a number of different parameters. The baseline for us was the SDR version, which was 48 nit peak luminance with a black level of 0 0.024 nits and a maximum contrast ratio of 2000 to one. Then for all of the other versions, uh, we increased the peak luminance to around 100 nits. And then we adjusted the black levels. We had similar one to SDR of about 0 0.02 nits, going down to 0 0.01, 005, 002, 001, and the largest contrast ratio with almost up to 200,000 to one at a black level of 0 0.0005 nits. Now, when we compared them, it was really interesting because one of the things we noticed um, fairly quickly is that when you're comparing um, the SDR version against all of these different black levels, we could clearly see a correlation that lower black levels receive much better ratings all across the board. As you can see here in each of those um, diagrams, we always compared the SDR version to one of the enhanced contrast performance versions. So we compared SDR to the 0 0.0005 nits all the way up to the SDR equivalent of 0 0.02 nits, but with a higher peak brightness level. And you can see um, how each of those clips for each of those versions performs slightly different. Now, when we're starting to plot this out, um, looking at the average black level evaluation results, um, we're seeing a very interesting trend. Um, we're seeing that the user preference score increases with decreasing black levels. In other words, um, there's a clear preference for lower black levels between all of these different versions, but we're also starting to see that this curve is flattening around 0 0.005 nits, which means that there's clearly a perceived difference with black levels below 0 0.005 nits, but they're not as noticeable as they were before. And that really led us to the conclusion that these test results show that a black level of 0 0.005 provides a sufficiently differentiated viewing experience. Black levels above that, in our opinion, are insufficient in achieving a compelling HDR experience, but black levels below that perform very similarly and there's not much additional value. So from a DCI perspective, we determined that um, we're intending to specify 0 0.005 or five millinits as the black level requirement for next generation HDR projection and display cinema systems. Similarly, for peak brightness, we also performed a lot of tests. In that scenario, we de defined um, eight different test clips. Um, we selected them and we created multiple different versions of those. All of them were prepared ahead of time. They were specifically graded for the Sony CLED um, by colorists that were familiar with the content. Um, that was an aspect very important to us. And I will have um, Annie Chang talk a lot more about the process for creating this content right after this part of the presentation. Now, you, while you see these eight clips here, there's really only four of them that were very specifically focused on determining the different peak brightness levels. That's clip A, clip B, clip G, and clip H. All of the others had very specific other use cases. And there's a reason why we included them in the testing. But for the purposes of determining the peak brightness capabilities, it's really these four clips that are mostly important that we're going to focus on. Now, when we're looking at the results, there's a very clear preference um, for 
content that is brighter than 100 nits. The preference for comparing SDR to 100 nit HDR content is only marginal. You can see the mean score here is 0.5, which means it's somewhere between the same and slightly better. However, you can then clearly see that mean score significantly jump for any of the other versions. Um, so you see the mean score of 1.46 when you compare SDR to 300 nits, 1.66 when it jumps to 500, and 1.38 when it jumps to 800. So on average, you can say, safe to say, that SDR comparing to 100 nits is only marginally better, yet for any of the other versions, the users can really see a very significant improvement. Now, we also compared um, the different HDR grades um, between each other. When we're comparing 300 versus 500 nits or 500 versus 800 nits, what we're really seeing here is that the results show that most of them are more or less rated the same. In other words, there's not much of a view or preference for brightness capabilities above 300 nits. What that led us to conclude is that we can clearly see that there's a strong preference for peak brightness levels above 300 nits for HDR content. Those types of experiences provide a sufficiently differentiated viewing experiences, which is what we are striving for. Brightness levels below that level, in our opinion, are insufficient in achieving a compelling HDR experiences. And levels above 300 nits perform similarly and do not provide significant additional value over the 300 nit grade. With that in mind, DCI intends to specify 300 nit as the peak brightness requirement for next generation HDR projection and display cinema systems. In summary, we are all very excited about the fact that next gen um, D cinema systems will be capable of higher contrast and peak brightness with lower black levels. That is something that we're all looking forward to. DCI has spent a lot of years testing, running statistical analysis, and working with industries uh, to really determine what are the appropriate parameters to achieve a sufficiently differentiated HDR experience. Our conclusion is that from a peak brightness perspective, 300 nits is the sweet spot. And for black levels, it's five milli nits, 0 0.005 nits. I'd like to take a second to thank all of the industry specialists, all of the manufacturers, and all of the other volunteers that were involved provided their time and shared their valuable knowledge with DCI throughout this process. And we're looking forward to continuing working with all of you. And now I'd like to hand it over to Annie Chang to talk a little bit more about the content creation process. Thanks, Mike. Hi, I'm Annie Chang, VP of Creative Technologies at Universal Pictures. I'm also part of the DCI Tech Committee, and I helped procure the content created for the 2020 test. For this test, we wanted a variety of content, both animation and live action, with visual effects and non-visual effects shots. This varied content included The Wedding Ringer, a romantic comedy from Sony, Doctor Strange, a superhero visual effects movie from Disney Marvel, Into America's Wild, a nature documentary, and various animation clips from Disney Pixar. Because of the nature of HDR and its impact to creative intent, once we selected the clips, we had the specific colorist who worked on the original grade help us creatively time the clips at 300, 500, and 800 nits. We told the colorists to optimize the image for each of those levels as opposed to just cranking things up. All of the clips already had approved grades for the theatrical SDR at 48 nits and the theatrical Dolby Vision 100 nits, which we included in the testing as well. The colorists graded the clips on a calibrated Sony C-LED direct view display for consistency sake. Also, the reason why we use the Sony C-LED as a display device was because it was the only large size display technology that was available to us at the time that could show both near zero blacks and peak brightnesses up to 800 nits. And so you know, we didn't just take the 1000 nit home video master and tone map the clips down to each of the various peak brightness levels. We tried a test of that in October of 2019, but quickly determined that we needed these clips to be creatively graded. As for the clips, it was a balance to figure out what clips were available to us to use, along with which colorist was available and was also open to playing with the dynamic range palette. 
We also had Pixar render one set of clips at different black levels to help reconfirm the testing that was done in 2017. Again, the colorist at Pixar creatively graded them at 0.005 and 0.01 nit blacks. Then we included the approved clips from the theatrical SDR and the near zero black from the theatrical Dolby Vision 100 nit as well. For additional black level testing, we also had two different Pixar movies with dark scenes and compared the theatrical SDR with the theatrical Dolby Vision 100 nit near zero black. Once we had the clips created, we then had to shorten the brighter level clips to a testing length of 10 seconds or less in order to prevent the overall length of each session from being too long and causing fatigue for the participants. We had to make the black level clips much longer, like 16 to 20 seconds long, in order to help the participants' eyes adjust to the dark environment. Once we chopped down the clip lengths, Mike Radford from Disney helped us write a script that created randomized pairings of each of the test clips for the sessions. While random, we did enforce some rules. One rule was that we wanted a bias towards comparing neighboring grades. For example, we thought it would be more useful to compare 300 nits directly against 500 nits rather than 100 versus 500, since the difference would be pretty obvious. The neighboring grades pairing was biased by a factor of four to five. So four out of the five pairs on average would have neighboring grades. We also wanted to ensure that all the clips were seen at least once. For some of the black level testing clips where we only compared the theatrical SDR with the theatrical Dolby Vision 100 nit version, we only wanted those to appear once in each run. The entire program was intended for a single audience viewing, including the title cards, transition cards, and all randomized pairings. So all of these were authored into a single CPL. We made eight unique and randomized versions of those CPLs, one for each session, all packaged into a single DCP. No one, including Mike Radford, nor the projectionist, knew the details of the final pairings during the sessions. I hope this gives you a bit more insight into how the clips were selected and presented for the testing participants. I'll hand this back over to Sterling Silva to close us out. DCI would like to thank everyone who contributed and made these findings possible. Together, we can bring audiences a cinematic experience like they've never seen before. Thank you.